Hello, welcome to Scrap Time episode 924. My name is Christina and on today's episode, Mara Johnson is teaching us all about the splash of color primary elements. All right, so right now we're going to do a little bit of playing with primary elements, artist pigments by Luminar. And to me, this is the most versatile product in the entire line because it's where everything starts. So you, we can't have the twinkling H2Os, we can't have silks, we can't have the mists or any of it without the pigments mixed, okay? So that said, anything color, product-wise, meaning paints and dyes and yada, come from a pigment, okay? So this here are the, up, they're upside down. I am so sorry, here we go. I like them upside down because I can't see. That's what we kind of mentioned. I can see, I just can't see really clear. <laughs> anyway, so there's several ways you can use them. And to get started, where you can use um, this, which is called Binder Resist, and it would be used for anything porous or paper based. So, chipboard, particle board, any, you know, it could be wood. Wood's porous, it could be regular paper. And the point being is that this actually will help bind the mica and the color to whatever surface that you are painting on, okay? So if you were to mix this product with just water, it'd dye it, no problem. But the mica might not stay. And that would kind of defeat the point, at least because that's that beautiful. Can you see the shimmer in that one? Just being able to keep that on wherever you're painting, right? You gotta do all that work, you want it to last. So that one is gonna do water based product. This one is going to create your own acrylic. So think of it as a gel medium. Okay, That would be something that you could use if you have gel medium and you're doing collage. It's going to be translucent because it dries clear, but it creates your own acrylic glaze or acrylic paint. So you can mix any of our fabulous colors together and have a thousand different paints at your fingertips. Or you can use it dry, which is what we're going to play with first. And when we use it dry, it could be used within stamping, but I'm going to kind of go away from the stamping right now and go to my go-to tool, which is hairspray. Or if I were using Aquanet, it would be like, you know, bringing high school back. Yeah. Right? But we're going to use hairspray. I'm going to turn around, spray it a bit, get it nice and wet, because this is very porous, so we're going to get it nice and wet. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to open up our color. We're going to make this bright so it shows up on the camera really well. You're going to use a dry brush, okay? You're going to pretend that this brush was very fluffy. It's not, but you're going to pretend. And you're going to go ahead and dust the powders on. Go to town, keep utilizing it. You can tell when it starts to dry. Because it's hairspray, we get a little bit of instant gratification while we're at it, which is lovely. Back when we were kids, when we used to do chalk paint, I mean like chalk art at school, and the teacher would use hairspray in it. So I'm just, you know, using what I learned when I was in second grade, bringing it back. You can kind of see like this, keep going. We'll do it again. I almost sprayed it with my water bottle. On both sides. One of the things that's really cool is that the fiber, not the fibers, there is no fiber here. The pigments, because they are so fine, you could do layers and layers and layers. And if this was engraved or etched or whatever, you'd never lose detail, which is nice. Also, say I was like, yeah, okay, that's a well, I'm gonna say it. That's a little too pink for me. I'm so not so pink. So I wanna go ahead, take this spray. The hairspray's gonna add act as a fixative but it'll also add the next color. And it's not completely commitment to the first color. You can keep changing your mind and you can keep going and you're not gonna lose the detail. And, go like so. And if you're done, you'd be done. If you weren't done, you can keep on going. So this one, my dear, is wood. Super easy. So this one, this is plaster, where we dipped, which is huge right now. It's coming on back. So same thing. Because this is very porous, I usually tend to douse it. And then we'll go with, 
purple. Yeah. So we'll go with a little purple. Now notice how, and I'm doing this on purpose, notice how this one isn't um, spreading as easy, right? That is because reds and some of the blues, the pigments themselves, even when you grind them down, they still have very grainy, okay? When it's grainy, it's not going to spread out as easy, which means that because I made it very wet, it kind of becomes a little bit of a paint itself a little bit more. And then we can keep adding on new colors. And I like doing the new colors. Keep blending. And we'll blend some of this. And you would just keep going. Until it ends up like this one. So it's, we're just going to leave this half done so that we can keep going so the video doesn't get super long. Okay? And now I'm going to show you don't trust a pigment by its color. Okay? So let me get this color out of the way. It's our messy paper. So this here. Million dollar question. What color do you think this really is? It looks brown. Okay. We'll go with brown. This is where you don't trust. No. Dip it in. Oh, it's red. Yeah. Most incredible shade of red. So you really do when you see these in the store or you see them even in your studio. You have to read the color because it may be completely different when you make it as into a paint as it was here. Okay, complete, completely different. So this one here will do, and this is because I didn't add a lot of water. You, know, you can light it up. It was very thick on my brush so it can go and be very light. Okay. But then there's this. So this is a beautiful blue. What it looks beautiful as it is, uh -huh. right? Just a little tiny bit. Just do it on here. Okay. Yeah. That was your idea. Recycling, upcycling the palette. You can see as a watercolor. Oh, it's very Shantung. It looks like Shantung silk. It's different than it looks here. It looks a little bit more dull, even and beautiful, yes. but not nearly as here. Yeah, totally different. Completely. So as the more and more experimenting you do, the more you're going to be able to sell the heck out of it. If you do any kind of stamping, you do it with a Versamark or any type of clear carrier, any type of carrier that you would need up in heat gun to set it, you'll be able to sprinkle this, not sprinkle, brush it on with a dry brush, and it'll stick, heat set, done. Actually, you don't even have to heat set, you can just let it dry if you really want to because it'll just absorb all the moisture from the stamp pad as well. I mean, there's just... It never ends, the amount of things you can do, or mixing it into your different mediums, like you can mix it into the modeling creams and the Inca Gold to change the color. If you don't want to have one color Inca Gold, give them like a pearl, because a pearl will create, and using the colors will create happy color. You know, be bright. You know, be something like, you know, clean color, because you mixed it with the white. It won't have mica, but it'll be beer, it'll be metallic, yeah. right? Uh -huh. But if you picked a gold and you mixed it, you're gonna have it would be as if you're mixing with yellow. So if you had pink, it'll make peach. If you have, you know what I'm saying? Yes. If you had blue, it'll make green. And then if you use silver, silver will make things bright and like really vibrant and metallic, like a party in a bottle. Because do you, you know what a Swarovski crystal is? And do you know the rhinestones behind the rhinestone? It always has mirror. It's sort of the same idea. So it's got like this silver base with color on top. It's going to pop through. It's a little bit of a, you know, experimenting. But you're going to have three different basic colors, which are going to have three completely different colors with the same pigment. You know what I mean? It's, it, it opens up a whole new world. Yeah. Well, not to mention dyeing fabric and making felt and dyeing ribbons. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. But you might be bored of me after four or five hours of this. <laughs> So thank you. Hopefully it just like, you know, give you a little taste, dip your toes in. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Yes. If not, I'm sure we'll let you know where to find me. Right? Have a good day. Thank you.
Well, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to check out our website at www.scruptime.ca. And on our next episode, I'm going to be showing you the We Are Memory Keepers Pocket Scrap Dies. So please join us. Thanks for watching Scrap Time.